It's five o'clock and it's Wednesday. It's time for... Craig and Ryland's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. And welcome back to the show. We have some great items. We've got some really good tricks this week, haven't we? Yeah. Including one of the best tricks I've seen in a long time. And we've also got a download that we're going to be reviewing, which is almost as bad as the Perfidious Any Card at Any Number. Like, this thing is terrible. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, first of all, thanks very much for tuning in. Please, uh, please, please ignore Ryland's bedhead. I mean, seriously, this is what happens when you film the review show on Sunday morning at nine o'clock when he's got out of bed. I had to drag him out of bed to do this. So uh, you're not, you're not, you're, you're a bit tired, aren't you? Yeah, we can handle it. We can handle it. We're professional. I might fall asleep at the end of the thing. <laughs> Don't fall. Asleep. You're not a teenager yet, dude. Right, let's get straight on with the first review. Okay, so review number one, we have Mini Me by Steve Marcello. This is a new item. Uh, it involves ink moving around on the back of a playing card. I've always liked moving ink effects. There's so many of them. Jay Sankey has published like a million of them. Uh, lots of different versions of this, but this, is, uh, this has got some interesting ideas. What we're going to do, I'm going to perform it first of all, and then we'll talk about what we think about it. Sound good? Yeah. Let's do it. So, Rye... Inside here, I've got a playing card. It's not a prediction, but it's a helper. You'll see what I mean in a minute. There's a helper on this playing card that's going to help me do the trick that I'm about to show you, okay? So, we're going to use a deck of cards. And uh, you're going to pick one of these cards. But before you do, I just want you to see that they're all there. They're all different. Is that fair, buddy? Yeah. Good stuff. So, you're going to pick one of these cards. And you can have literally any card that you want. And we're going to do it in the fairest way that I can possibly think of, which is cutting piles onto a table like this. I'm going to cut piles onto a table. Just say stop anytime you want. Stop. Right there? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay, that's the card. Have a look at it. Do not show me. You can show everyone else, but don't show me. Okay? Yeah. And then you can put it away into the pack any way you want to. Is that fair? Yeah. So now... Your card's lost in the deck. Look, no breaks, nothing weird going on. I have to find your card. Yeah. And I'm going to use this special card. Remember I said I had a special card here. This yeah. is kind of a helper card uh, because it's got a little helper. It's got like a mini magician on the, uh, on the card. I've drawn a little mini magician. You can tell it's a magician. It's actually a little mini me because he has no hair like me. And he's got a top hat, which means he's a magician. And I want you to concentrate on your card. You see, if I just take this little mini magician and shake him, look at what happens. One card, he put, reaches into the hat and pulls out one card and one card only. The Seven of Hearts, it's right there on the two. There it is, your little mini magician with the Seven of Hearts. And you can examine everything. There we go. That is Mini Me. So that is Mini Me. Basically, the effect is very simple. You have a playing card and they pick a card and the card rises out the hat. And then the nice thing is immediately this can be handed out for examination. Now, this is very similar to a trick uh, by a guy called Martin Lewis called Cardiographic, uh, which you've seen before. I know you have, where you've got a big sketch pad and uh, they, they draw a deck of cards on there. And then on the sketch pad, one card rises up. Um, yeah, you've seen it, and then they give them out. I'll do it in my stage show. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's very similar to cardiographic. Now, I've seen things like this before. The first time I saw something like this was by JB TV, J uh, J uh, JB Magic, Mark Mason, many, many years ago. He had a version of something similar to this, but he had a rising card thing, right? So it was a, a card, and a card rose out of it, but it was a very badly made gimmick. Like, you could totally see what was happening. And Jay Sankey had something many years ago called One Car Garage, which is a similar sort of thing. He drew a garage on a card, and then he... Uh, he pulled the garage up and you could see the car inside and then they could examine it. So there's a couple of different versions of this. What I like about this, right, what I really like about this is that um, it's, it's uh, well, first of all, it's super commercial. But, uh, you, you know how this works. How easy is this? Easy. If you can just do one move, it's just a simple double lift and it's done uh, at just... Triple lift. A triple lift, thank you. It's done at just the right time where there's no misdirection at all. If you can do that, everything else is self-working. Now, it's uh, it's a shuffle deck in use as long as you have the gimmick inside the... Uh, as long as you have the gimmick card inside the envelope, you can, use, you can use a regular deck, you can tip the card onto the deck and you're good to go anytime, anywhere. Like I say, it's really easy to do. It's really visual. 
Once you've finished, all you have to do is just take away uh, a couple of cards, just in the action of putting the uh, the envelope back, you steal it away, so you don't have to palm, and you're left with a regular deck of cards. It's a very interesting souvenir that you're giving people, isn't it? I mean, when you saw this, you were like, oh man, that's cool. What do you think of this trick? I think it's really good. Negative, downside, uh, not a negative, but just something you need to be aware of. It is very close up. Uh, you know, if you, do, you couldn't do this on a big table in low lighting conditions. You couldn't do this from a distance unless you had some sort of TV projection. This is a definite close up trick. But for walk around, it's great. Now, the only issue I've got with it is it has to be the Seven of Hearts. So if you're doing like a, a, a small walk around gig where there's like 50 people, you couldn't really do this every single time because they might talk and everyone picks the Seven of Hearts. But if you're doing like one of those gigs where there's like hundreds of people or whatever, or you're doing a festival outside or you work in a restaurant, it doesn't matter that the same card's getting picked over and over again because there's so many people or people don't know each other. It's not an issue, but it's something you need to bear it'll, in mind. It'll be perfect in a restaurant because there's different families and all, and, and, and I wouldn't want to look around because of COVID right now. <laughs> because of COVID, yeah, you got a point there. Um, now you only get one of these. So what happens is at the end, uh, they can examine the card. You only get one of these but you can very easily make yourself make it yourself okay so all you have to do is if you want to hand this out as a souvenir at the end get yourself a red pack of cards you just have to draw this uh very very carefully it'll probably take you a couple of hours but then you have a deck full of giveaways that you can give away the card every single time so for a restaurant i love the idea of doing this routine having the card come out like this and then maybe getting a sticker with your details putting the sticker on the card and giving them as a souvenir i think this is a really magical thing like i say it reminds me of cardiographic which is so magical but the but the massive plus for this is you can have a regular deck of cards you can get into it anytime you want to just by having the envelope into your pocket you can examine everything at the end this is a really nice giveaway and the gimmick is made really well the camera is really close up on it and you just don't see anything because of how it's made it really does does look just normal it just looks like a drawing on the back of a card and that thing animates and then they you know they see it and then you immediately hand it out for for examination it's really good i i really like it have you got anything to add about this you got anything to add no. have you ever seen a routine like this where something animates with ink or is that something new for you no. i thought you'd seen cardiographic so what do you think of the idea of like something animating like that and you've got a drawing and you blatantly see a picture moving inside there and then you give it out you were you were a bit fooled when I first showed you this, weren't you? You were like, yeah. "How did you knew that there was like a triple lift there or something?" You know, I've done a move, but you couldn't figure out how it worked, could you? Yeah. Which is cool. Which is cool. I really like it. You know, I I love routines like this. Like I say, I've got a soft spot for anybody who watches the Magic Lives. You'll know that I've got a soft spot for drawing on the back of cards. So I really like this. It's very well priced. Uh, the gimmick will last a lifetime. It's very practical. It's very commercial. Just be aware that you do have to be very close to your audiences. Oh, and, and one more thing, by the way, this works brilliantly in a, in a virtual show because you can come really close up to the camera and they can see that rise and it really does look really good. So if you're doing virtual shows, this is a great thing to do. Um, yeah, it just, it just, it's really good for virtual as well. I'd recommend it. I'm definitely going to do it. I've not tried it in a virtual show yet, but I've shown it to, uh, to you and Thea and, and mommy and stuff. And you know, it's, it, I like it. I love it. I'm going to give it 92%. What about you? 100. Why am I not surprised? Right. hundred percent from you, 92% from me. Let's get on with the next routine. Okay, so next up on the show, we have Ring in the Bell, produced by the guys at Penguin Magic and created by Reynold Alexander. This is super commercial. When this came in for review, we were just like, oh my gosh, I want it, I want this. We watched the, uh, the download. We were like, this is so super exciting. We we're arguing about who got to perform it. Obviously, you won because you always do. Uh, but this is, I'm telling you right now, this is really commercial. You're going to perform it, right? Yeah. And then when you've performed it, we'll talk about what we think about it. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah? Let's do it. Let's go for it, right? Mummy, can yeah. I have your ring? Wedding ring? Yes. Okay. Wedding ring. Hang on. There you go. Thank you. Right. What a beautiful ring you have here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to put it in this hand. Okay? And then we just wait for our magic bell. Uh, there we go. Now we're gonna ring the bell. 
The ring disappeared. What have you done with my ring? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll make it come back. Let me try again. Try again. What? <laughs> uh, you can try, Daddy? You want me to try? You Mommy, do look. it over your hand. Has it worked? No. Nope. A bit higher. Do. A bit higher? Oh, do you know why the bell rings? Why? <laughs> the bell rings because the ring is in the bell. Dude, <laughs> the ring. There it is, the clapper in the ring, in the bell, is actually your ring. That is such a cool trick. That is a really cool trick. <laughs> let me uh, let me let me just take it off here and I'll uh, we'll talk about it. There we go. So uh, I'm going to keep that there for a minute. So that is ringing the bell. Now, what? Let me tell you why I love this. First of all, so well, why do you love it? Because you said you loved it so much. Uh, because you think it's literally, they feel like you've made their ring disappear and they get so mad. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, it's the first time Sarah saw it. What did you think of it, Sarah? I like it, actually. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? I love the idea. Uh, I saw something similar to this many, 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 many years ago at Blackpool. I think it was by, I want to say El Duco, but I don't know. But this is, what's really nice about this is it's it's so commercial. You just put the bell in your back pocket, right? Okay, so you just put the bell in your back pocket and you are literally good to go. Anytime you want to, you can borrow the ring um, and, and literally the only move is a false transfer. So all you have to do is borrow the ring, reach into your back, back pocket, get the bell and it's done. You can use the bell to make the ring disappear and then you can use the bell to bring the ring back. That's basically in essence what's happening here, right? Now, it's completely angle proof, completely angle proof. If you've got the bell in your back pocket, it's gonna stick out slightly over the top of the back pocket, but it just looks like you've got something back there. And if you've got a suit jacket on and you're doing a gig, or you've got a shirt on like this, they won't see anything. Um, it's really easy to do, it's one vanish. Um, and you know what, up until this point, when I've done ring routines, and I do a lot of ring routines, I do ring and string, I do ring on spoon, I do a whole bunch of different stuff. When I do ring routines, I typically will have it go into a nest of wallets by Nick Einhorn, or I'll have it go into, again, Nick Einhorn, uh, I think it's called ProFlight, which is the, uh, the ring on um, key thing, uh, or sometimes I'll use the Dave Bonsall flying ring. This, however, I'm gonna be using this. I know I'm gonna be using this. Now, one of the things penguins say um, is they say that what you can do, one of the advantages of this, ring, this bell is you can have it ring before, you can have it ring during, and you can have it ring after. So they suggest bringing it out and using it almost like a running gag during a close-up performance. So you're using the bell almost like a magic wand. I like that idea, but there wasn't any extra routines. Really, the only routine they teach you is what I just showed you. Take the ring, take the bell, make it disappear, have it go under the, the bell. Now, I've been playing with this for the last few days, and I've come up with a sequence that I think is really nice, that would be perfect if you have like a table, and if you don't need a close-up mat. Let me actually show that for you. Let me just show you what uh, what my idea is. Ryan, come here. Let's just say I've just borrowed a ring. Come here. Let me just say that I've just borrowed your ring. Let me, let me show you what I think would be really cool with this. So, Ryan, here's what's going to happen. Would you like to learn how to do some magic? with a ring and a bell. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a magic bell. Do you know why it's a magic bell? Why? Every time you ring the bell, magic happens. If you don't ring the bell, nothing happens. But Brian, every single time you ring that bell, magic happens. You see, I take this ring, right? All I have to do is take the bell, ring it. Do you know what happens? What? The ring disappears. Actually, I say it disappears. It doesn't. It's invisible. It's still there. You can't see it, though, until you ring and it comes back. Now, that works every single time. But I'm going to let you try this, right? Uh, do me a favour. Take the bell. Just ring it over my hand, drop the bell back there, there you go, and uh, let's have a look see if it's worked. Yes, look, the ring has disappeared. Now, if you just snap, it comes back. Oh, you know what the problem is? You rang too hard. Do you know what happens when you ring too hard? What? Well, what happens is when you ring too hard, it actually goes underneath the bell, um, which is a bit of a problem. Let me try that again. Look, you need to ring it more like that. Take the bell, ring it more like that. Try again, take the bell, ring it more like that. A little bit harder. Great, put it down there and the ring disappears, but you rang it too hard again. Do you know what happens when you ring it too hard? What? It, it, it actually goes right there onto the handle of the bell. Uh, hold, cup your hands together for me. There you go, there you go. Isn't that weird? 
It's kind of weird, isn't it, really? But I tell you what, we're going to try and do this one more time, and you're definitely, definitely going to be able to do it this time. So I want you to watch very carefully. Do not blink. You've got to watch the bell. You've got to watch the ring. Okay, can you do that for me? Watch the bell, watch the ring. Now watch this. I'm going to take the bell, and I'm going to ring. And when I do, what happens is the, 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 uh, the, um, the ring disappears. Now you're going to bring it back in your hand. Hold your hand out here, make a fist, take this bell, hold it in the other hand, wave it over the bell and show everyone it's come back. Oh sorry, hang on, close your hand. Uh, bring this a bit higher. Try again. Have a look. Oh no, close your hand. A bit higher. Wave. Oh do you know, you've done it too hard again. Do you know what happens when you do it too hard? What? It doesn't go under the bell. It doesn't go on the stem of the bell. It actually becomes the clapper on the bell there it is so that's my idea with that that's what i do that's not on the download but for me that just kind of makes sense i prefer it as kind of a, a routine that builds and uh if you want me to go through that just let me know if you can prove to me that you've got this from penguin i'll happily share with you a video on how i uh kind of the moves that i went through to do that but what i really like about it is it allows you to steal the gimmick this moment where um when it's on the stem of the bell in the action of tipping that out into your hand or into their hand it allows you to steal the gimmick so that you're then in a position where you can do the finale. So anyway, that's what I that's why I'm going to be doing with it. But I also like the fact that you can just have it in your back pocket. Why don't you do two routines with it? You can go your routine and then you can go into penguins, which makes two routines. And you can, Sounds good. And then you can go. Boom. Well, you know what? The other thing I actually that's a really good point actually. One of my favourite magicians is a guy called Steve Bedwell. And he's bought a DVD out in the past called Tate. And I remember, he's a, he's a champion of magic, right? And I remember many, many years ago, he did this act called the Walkman Act. And he walked out on stage and he had what, you don't even know what a Walkman is, but it's way back in the day. A Walkman, you wore headphones, but not like AirPods like that. You wear like big, massive headphones like this. And you put a tape recorder here and you used to play tapes. This is before like... Uh, smartphone, I'm talking a foreign language too, I know I am, but he did this thing called the Walkman Act and he had this thing in his belt and he took his hat off and he did a trick and the Walkman disappeared from his belt and went under the hat and he said, I'm going to do this four times during this act. I'm going to get this Walkman off my belt underneath there and you won't see it any time. And then he carries on doing it. He like does a rope trick and then he says, but look under the hat, there's the Walkman. Da, 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 da. Look, it's a ball, it's disappeared, but look under the hat. And he keeps putting this thing under the hat and no one notices, right? You could do the same thing with this as a running gag in a competition act or in a longer parlor act. Well, I just think you could say, can I borrow a ring? Uh, wonderful. Okay, I'm going to take this bell. We're going to ring the bell. I'm going to make the ring disappear. Do you know where it goes? It goes inside the bell. Isn't that weird? Look, I'm going to take the ring out. I'll put the ring over there. I'm going to try and show you some other stuff. And that ring right there is going to go back into that bell three times. And each time you won't see it. Let me show you a coin trick. Oh, but do you remember the bell? Now it's back into the bell. So I think that for somebody really creative, I haven't actually routine how to do that, but it'd be fairly easy and have it so that it keeps going underneath the bell. I think that if it keeps going into the bell. I Look think that would be, I know, right? I think that'd be an amazing thing. There's so many possibilities with this. As I say, that routine I just showed you was me just playing with it for a few days. Uh, but the basic routine, super commercial, walk around, no angles, anytime, anywhere. Um, uh, just instant resets. Ready to go, easy to do, boom, perfect. I'm giving this 100% because I know it's going to go in my act, it's going to stay in my act for a long time. What about you? 100%. 100%, boom, totally agree with you. Uh, it's really good. Uh, I can't believe you kissed this one. Well, I've got to give it 100% because it's so gosh darn good. 100% from him, 100% from me. Let's look at the next review. Right, okay, so review number three. We have Envil Epic by Walter Vale and Bizarre Magic. Do you know who Bizarre Magia are? Mm. Do you? They make the mouth coils that I oh. use. Yeah, so when I do all the, you know, to me toilet paper, how many how many mouth coils do I get through? A thousand. A thousand. Uh, they, make the, they make the best mouth coils. But anyway, they brought out this Envil Epic. It's a version of the Mental Epic board or the Mental Epic slate, which has been around for years. And I really quite like this. Let me perform it for you. And then we'll talk through what's good about it, what's not so good about it. Uh, I'm going to do this on my beautiful wife, Sarah. Sarah, can you help me with this? Would that be okay? Yeah. Good stuff. So, um, I have three mini whiteboards here. 
uh, one, two, three mini whiteboards. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. And as well as the three mini whiteboards, I also have envelopes. That one has number one on it. That one has number two on it. And this one has number three on it, right? Uh, one, yes, three, two, one, perfect. And the reason I have three envelopes with three different numbers on it is because I'm going to make three predictions. I'm gonna read your mind, Sarah. Are you ready for this? Okay. Your mind is about to get read. Very exciting stuff. We're gonna start off with envelope number one. And my first prediction, what I want you to do is think of a country anywhere in the world. Just think of a country, okay? Think of a country, have you got that in your mind? Yeah. Don't say anything, don't write it down. I am going to make a prediction here. I'm gonna make a prediction and I'm gonna commit myself. Boom, committed. Put the lid on the pen for me there, buddy. Right, so I want you to remember, I have committed myself, prediction number one. I have committed myself before you said anything. I'm just gonna pop that away inside here. That's my first prediction, okay, sir? Yeah. Uh, we'll put that there. Now, just tell everybody, what country were you thinking of? Australia. Australia, interesting. You've never been there, have you? No. Okay. Uh, we're gonna use prediction number two now. Prediction number two, you can do the same thing. Uh, so this time, I want you to think, where's my pen gone, have you got my pen? Can I have my pen back, man? Um, this time, this is my pen, because your pen's rubbish, right? Yeah, my pen too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, prediction number and it, two. And this plays how normal pens come in. When you, and then when you press down, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't care. <laughs> I'm doing a trick. Right, pred prediction number two. Uh, what I want you to do this time, Sarah, I want you to think of uh, the name of a TV programme. Any TV programme in the entire world. Uh, one you've seen, one you haven't seen. Just any TV programme. Can you think of that? Yes. I am going to write down my prediction. Okay, uh, lid on the pen, please. There's the lid, there's the lid right there. Okay, I predicted it, envelope number two, I predicted it, I'm gonna seal it in there so you know I can't cheat. There it is, going into that envelope. And now, you can tell everyone, what TV show were you thinking of? Bones. Why am I not surprised? She's a massive David Boreanaz fan. Uh, Bones, right, okay, we're gonna go with one final one. And we're gonna make this really random, we're gonna use a pack of cards. Okay, but before we do anything, uh, with envelope number three, I'm gonna make one final prediction. Ben, please. It's like, it's like you're my glamorous assistant. You're doing such a good job. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna predict the card that you're gonna take in a minute, Sarah, okay? Okay. Okay, lid on the pen, please, Ryan. So envelope number three, I have made my final prediction. I am going to pop that in there. There it goes. Perfect. Now, you're going to pick a card. Right. So we're going to do this as fairly as we can. I know you're behind the camera, so there's nothing you can do about this. So I will very fairly go through. Actually, I'll do it like this. Uh, Ryan, you can touch a card for, for Mummy, any card that you want to. Are you happy with that card? Yeah. You happy? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, let's show the uh, the camera and Sarah. I need to see. Okay, yeah. See the card. It. Cool. Okay, brilliant stuff. <clears throat> so we now have a situation where you were thinking, and, and by the way, you can tell everyone what was the what was the card. The Ace of Hearts. The Ace of Hearts. So think about this for a minute. You you thought of a uh, a country, and before you said anything, I wrote down a prediction in. Envelope number one. Okay. And then I asked you to think of a TV show and I wrote down a prediction in envelope number two. And then I asked you to think of a card and I wrote down a prediction in envelope number three. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Let's start with the first one. Let's, well, actually, let's go backwards. Let's start with envelope number three. Uh, envelope number three, you said it was the Ace of Hearts, right? Envelope number three, Ace of Hearts. <laughs> and you didn't even tell him by that time. I know, it's cool, right? Uh, envelope number two, this one right here. You said bones, right? And you yeah. didn't tell him by that time. And I put there, bones. I also wrote underneath, David is sexy. <laughs> I, I know you like bones. Um, and, then, and then finally, uh, envelope number one, this one right here. 
Um, <laughs> you said a country, what did you say? Australia. Australia. There you go. I am a mind reader extraordinaire. You're impressed, you're impressed, I can tell. Um, so there you go, so that is Enville, uh, Enville Epic. Um, this is really clever, isn't it? I mean, this is so clever. I've always liked the one ahead principle. I mean, anybody who's been into magic for more than zip point two seconds will understand the principle that's been at work here. This is the one ahead principle, which is used an awful lot in mentalism. In fact, I actually did something very similar to this on a magic live a few weeks ago now. I used a Richard Osterlin version with a post-it notepad where they get the post-it note signed and you make a prediction. Same sort of thing, but designed for close up. Uh, this is more of a stage or a parlor type routine. Now, what I really like about this is I, I love doing one ahead, but if you're using like a, a post-it note or something like that, post-it note pad, it's a little bit too small to do it on stage. You can make it big and you can make it play big, uh, but 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 this, this is more of a stage size type thing. Um, the, the old mental epic boards, I hate those because they look like a prop. Half of them are painted green and purple and they look terrible. They've got their little flaps that, are, uh, that come down. And it's obvious when you even a well-made one that's made out of wood and uh, whatever it may be, it's still obvious that that's a prop that has been designed to accomplish that trick. Whilst with this, you're just holding envelopes. That's it. So you've just got envelopes and you've just wrote numbers on envelopes. But this, there's so much you're getting here. First of all, these little whiteboards are perfect. They are absolutely perfect for the envelopes. They look really good. Um, they are really nice. But also the envelopes are so clever. It allows you to do the one ahead principle. What I hate, I hate when magicians do a one ahead principle and let's say they've got three pieces of paper and you've screwed up three pieces of paper and then they just mix them up for no random reason and then just put them back down. And it's kind of like, okay, well, it's obvious. And then they don't know which one's which when they pick it up and not very good. It, 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 it takes what is in essence an amazing feat of mentalism or mental magic and just destroys it in my opinion. What's nice about this is the clarity of what's happening. I'm gonna put this prediction in envelope number one. I'm going to put this prediction in envelope number two. I'm going to put this prediction in envelope number three. And then you're done. You can immediately, they're where they're meant to be. You can immediately open them and show them. It's just really cool. It also packs flat. You know, that old analogy, packs flat. It really does. This is all you need. It's a one minute reset. When you finish the show, you just need to get a little bit of, um, you know, damp water. Just, uh, just rub this off. And you, that's, that's the only reset, really. You just need to clean the, uh, clean the whiteboards and then you're good to go, ready to do it again. It'll fill a whole stage. Uh, it'll be good for a parlor show. It'll work really well for a virtual show. It'll work really well on a massive stage. It plays more. If you're like a magician that does close-up that's wanting to offer a cabaret add-on, this is a great thing to just do because... Uh, it's so easy to do. There's no skill involved in it. The envelopes work themselves. It allows you to focus on presentation and it plays really big. I love this. I'll just go get your dry erase marker. Thank you. No, 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 no. Come back, come back, come back. What do you think? What, to reset these? Yeah, we're not going to reset them just yet. What do you think of this? Uh, do you like it? Yeah. It's really clever, isn't it? When those envelopes... The way these envelopes work, it's a little bit like James Bond, isn't it? It's kind of like, it's done. It's great. Honestly, if you do Mental Epic or if you do One Ahead Principle and you want something that plays a little bit bigger, uh, this is definitely well worth doing. This would even work in a kid's show. You know, you could get kids to think of their favourite cartoons or whatever. For an older kid's show, I think this would work in an older kid's show. What do you reckon? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Would this work for seven and eight-year-olds? What do you reckon? Would your classmates understand what's going here or do you reckon they need to be a bit older? They're <laughs> You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Okay, I think they probably need to be about nine or ten years old, but I think it'll work for a kid's show. What are you doing now? Have you stolen my pen and given me your pen? No. Good. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give this 85%. I think I'd definitely do it, uh, which is why it's getting over 80%. 100% from him. It's great. Well worth picking up and a decent price as well. What are you giving it again? 85%. So we've left the worst till last. We've got review number four, which is a download that he bought, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. It's called Detect by Marif. It's a new download that's come out recently. Detect by Marif. You're gonna perform it for me, aren't you? Yeah. Go for it, buddy. Do you need, do you need the camera a bit closer? Mm, yeah. I think you probably do, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, let's get the camera a bit closer. Daddy? Yes, right? I've got a pack of cards. Okay. Okay. 
You want to put the box away for you? Yeah. All there, all different. Yeah, I'm cool yeah. with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm going to put the Joker there. Okay. And I want you to pick any card. Any one at all? Yeah. We'll go for that one. There we go, that card. That one. Yep. You're allowed to show the camera, but don't show me. You don't want to see it? No. Actually, yeah, I can see it. Okay. Ace of Hearts. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm cool with that. Now, I'm going to take, I'm going to give the cards like a cut, where I'm going to take half and put them there. Okay. Yeah. You're going to get rid of half? Yeah. Okay. Half. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to make piles, four piles. Okay, yeah? four piles. All right, four got piles. it. And that's pile number one. Pile number one. Okay. Put them there. Yeah, I'll put them over there for you. Okay. Pile number two. Pile number two, yep. Yeah. Pile number three. Mm-hmm. And pile number four, yeah? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to put the Ace of Hearts here and the Joker face up there. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And I'm going to put the cards on top of each other. Okay. okay. So I'm going to stack them up. Okay. Like this. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now, I'm going to deal the cards into two piles and you're going to tell me which uh, packet the Joker's in. Okay. okay? Yeah, got it. Now you've got to remember where the Joker is. And then tell you at the end. Yeah, tell me at the end. And and then when, when you're at the end, I'm going to get, well, put, well, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put uh, whichever package's not the Joker, I'm going to put it there. You're going to get rid of it? Yeah. Okay. Well, the Joker was in that one. Okay, so we get rid of this one. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And we're going to do it again. Okay. Remember where the Joker is. Joker was in that one. Okay, we're going to exterminate these. Exterminate them? You're a darling. <laughs> okay, go on, right? And tell me which one it is. Uh, Joker's in that one. Okay, exterminate these. Boom! Okay. That's a part of the dead. Okay, fair enough. And the one that time. Which one? That one. Exterminate. Boom! And it's left with one card. And that one card is the Ace of Hearts. Your card. Wow. Wow. So that is, is, is the download. Now, just to give you a bit of a backstory about this, me and Ryland were browsing through downloads and looking at them, and this one popped up, and he was like, oh my gosh, this is my, I think it's like $15 or something. Uh, he's like, that looks amazing. He read the, the write-up, and he's like, that looks amazing. I want that. And I'm like, Ryland, that's not going to be very good. Let's move on. He's like, no, I want it, I want it, I want it. So I told him, but if you want it, you've got to spend your own money on it, didn't I? Yeah. Because he does a lot of gigs with me, don't you? And I pay you when you do the gigs with me and you do a lot of virtual shows and stuff. So he's got, yeah. he's got, he's got money, it's loaded, right? Um, so, <laughs> um, so I, I said, if you want it, you've got you to buy it out your own money. And so he did. So you've actually spent your own money on this, right? So tell everyone what you think of it. It's dreadful. It's dreadful. Why is it dreadful? Because I agree with you, but why is it dreadful? For a start, the card, when you're dealing, the card is always going to end up in the left. There right, yeah. your left. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's part of the terrible bit, because it could have ended up in that, and that would be good, because it keeps on swapping around. It wouldn't be good, dude. It wouldn't be good. Th this, this... It would be better it if wouldn't... it just kept on swapping around. <laughs> I know what you mean. I do understand what you say. I get the logic. But here's the thing. This is the, the, It's so boring. It's like, right, okay, pick a card. You're not even finding the card. It, all you're doing is... All you're doing is you're just dealing through cards. I mean, here, you know how I... You, I know you haven't done many gigs live. You've done a few, right? A few weddings and everything. When you do enough gigs, you'll go to a gig and you'll do close-up magic and you'll meet this guy... 
and you see him every so often and he's like, oh, I do magic as well. Uh, give me your cards, I'll show you a trick. And you've just done some mind-blowing awesome stuff. And he's like, oh, now let me show you how I trick this old fool, yeah? And he does something dreadful, normally involving 21 cards, and you have to pretend because you're at a gig going, oh, yes, that's very good, oh, that's wonderful. Yes, I've seen it before, but you did it really well. Um, it's like that. This is the sort of trick that a layman who doesn't do magic would create and perform for you thinking it's good. It's terrible. You're not even finding the card. The card is just there. Um, you know, it's just like, oh, right, okay, the Ace of Hearts, brilliant. Let's just put it away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make four piles, and it's obvious what's going on there. And it's just, it's all mathematics. It's, it's dread. It's the 21 card trick is better than this. It's dreadful. Are you going to do this? You've learned it. You've just done it. Are you going to do it? No. In fact, after this show, when it is finished, I'm just going to tuck it in the bin and forget it. You better not. This is my deck of cohorts. But you can you can delete the download off the computer or whatever you want to do. Yeah. But we're not know. chuck the deck. <laughs> you, be the you better not do. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know what? It's just. It's, the download in the you know what, I don't want to turn the review show into a soapbox for bad downloads, but this is an example of bad downloads. I've done a few rants on the channel about terrible downloads and why it needs to be stopped and why there should be quality control. And I've had people say to me and go, well, you know, um, it, you know, if... if um, you know, it, it, magicians should do more due diligence. And yes, they should. I totally agree. Magicians should do more due diligence. But there's new people that are getting into magic all the time, like Ryland. And you've got some experience. You're experienced. Uh, uh, you know, you know a lot of magic. But you looked at the trailer for this and you were like, oh, that looks really good. And you were sucking in. And when you watch it, you realise it's rubbish. Now, Ryland has got enough experience to know that this trick is rubbish. But there might be somebody new who comes into magic that looks at this and goes, oh, this is good. And goes out performing it and isn't actually doing the stuff that would get good reactions that are going to help you uh, grow as a performer. It's just dreadful. The guy that's released this, had, are you even a performer? Are you even a magician? Do you even do magic? Because I can't say. The download, right. The trailer for this, the trailer for, oh, he's having a drink. The trailer for this is two and a half minutes long. The instructional download is five minutes long. It's five minutes. They're charging $10, $15 for a five minute download. There's no talking. It's all music, which is fine. Not a problem. I've seen things like that before. And then there's like subtitles at the bottom, which isn't too much of a problem if every other word was spelt incorrectly on the subtitles. If you're actually going to put a download out and teach it, at least have the integrity to actually go and put some effort into it. You know, when YouTube channels by 17-year-old kids have got more quality quality of, of production value than your download, that you're charging money for, then I think that's an issue. And this is terrible. I, I, I think this is on the same level as the Perfidious Any Card at Any Number. At least it works. Perfidious didn't work. At least it works. But you're never going to perform this to anybody. It's absolutely terrible. It's boring. And as I say, it's, it's been done before. The, 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 this sort of thing has been done and dismissed. Look, the bottom line is this is terrible. You wasted $10, $15 on it. I'll give you the money back so you don't have to worry about it. But the point is you need to do your due diligence on stuff like this. I'm ranting about, uh, about, about downloads all the time, but for good reason, because... There are so many terrible downloads out there and there's people like you that are new into magic that are looking at stuff like this and they're going, oh, this is good. And then they're wasting their money and it's just not fair. You can do your due diligence, but still anybody with any idiot can get a camera, film a self-working magic trick and then release it and charge money for it. And if you aren't careful, you're going to waste your money, which is what you've done right now. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible, isn't it? You're never going to do this, like I said. So, uh, I'm going to give this minus 100%. Honestly, I... Did you just read my mind? No, I am a mind reader. Well, I was going to give that, but I think I might give it worse now. Minus 1 trillion. Minus 1 trillion. Okay, I don't even know how to put that many... <laughs> zeros down on the thing underneath okay minus one trillion minus one trillion for you minus 100 from me this is just please avoid this at all costs and whoever it is that's created it i don't think you're a real magician uh, you should feel ashamed of yourself that you've actually gone and taken this and released it to the magic community uh, it, when 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 the trailer 
it, it, and the actual download and everything all together is seven minutes long, you know you've got trouble. It's dreadful. Do not buy. Avoid at all costs. And that's another review show in the bag. You get, you, get, you get more animated every single time you, <laughs> every single time you do that. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, there's some great items on there. There's some really great items. And then this is one of the worst downloads I've ever seen. Please avoid at all costs. I can't say that enough. Uh, but thanks very much for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We're going to be looking at another four products. And uh, if you want to check him out, you can check him out uh, on his own YouTube channel, which is The Kid Magician. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. We go live with 14 videos every single day. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow with the magic stuff, and then on Friday with a magic rant, Saturday with an honest trailer, Sunday with a Q&A, and on Monday we've got a 5x5. Five five. You can go back to bed now if you want to, because I know you're really tired. Yeah. Guys, there he is. He's falling asleep. Guys, thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. He's Ryland. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye, everybody.